live, I'm going after the true knowledge of self stolen from Africa. It's an honor to be back in Toronto after such a long time away. I will do my best not to be around or not to be away as long as I have. And so, here in Ontario, Canada, Marianne Shad, who once ran a school a few blocks away, from where the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy stands. She came here with her family and ran a school for black children in Canada. And not only that, Mary Ann Shad became the first woman in the history of Canada to publish her own newspaper, The Provincial Freeman, in which she advocated for self-determination along the lines of what the right, excellent, honorable Marcus Masai Garvey would do a little more than 50 years later. Mary Ann Shad was an immigrationist. She thought African people should think about relocating to Haiti, Mexico, or other territories in the Western Hemisphere. She became the second black woman in America to publish a newspaper. And even after doing all that, she fought for the equality of African women. Mary Ann Shad is often ignored in history, but she's one of the greatest black women to have ever lived. And even as an elder at the age of 60, this black woman would enroll in Howard University's law school and she would earn her law degree being only the second black woman in America to do so. A great black woman who made her name right here in Canada. There was a black man by the name of Elijah McCoy his parents escaped from slavery on the Underground Railroad. They ended up in Ontario, Canada, where he was born. He would move back to the States and make his way to Scotland, where he would become a mechanical engineer. After getting back to the States, it was hard for Elijah McCoy to find any work using his credentials due to racism. But he did manage to find a job oiling the parts on engines. And so eventually, he discovered a way for engines to be self-lubricated. Elijah McCoy is the father of the self-lubricating engine. So every time you see an airplane in the sky, every time you get in your automobile, Every time you climb on top of your motorcycle, every time you see a lawn mower, every time you see any automotive device or mechanical product that requires regular oiling, remember that it was a black man from Ontario, Canada, who gave the self-lubricating engine to the entire world. I understand that in Canada, a black child is four times as likely as a white one to be expelled from school. I understand in Ontario that a black person is 20 times more likely to be murdered by the police than a white person. I understand that although Toronto is a city of three million, only about 300,000 of such are African people. But despite being 10% of Toronto, we are 30% of those who are charged for possession of marijuana. And we are more than 40% of those who are pursued for hard 
drug use. How is it possible to only be 10% and yet be overrepresented two and three times over in the mass incarceration system? Canada is as racist as the United States. Live, I'm going after the true knowledge of self stolen from Africa.